In this video, we're going to formulate uh, the problem of finding the shortest path from A to F as a linear programming problem. Okay? Now, uh, when I go through this, um, I'm going to go all out, um, and I know already that there are going to be um, what you will feel to be redundant edges that I include in the LP solver. Uh, the reason for this is that if I include them, there's no problem with me including them, and it's less likely that I'm going to make mistakes in the long run when I do this. Okay? I know, so I'll, I'll pick them out as we go. Okay? I'll, I'll explain what I mean. So, first of all, um, remember that each of the edges, A, B, B, D, they're either going to be zeros or ones. Okay? Um, so, indicator variables. So we're starting off with minimize, and we're going to have to have um, all of the edges that could potentially be used um, called upon in the objective function. So first of all, I'm going to go all the routes out of A. So two lots of AB, so the weight times the indicator variable. Then we've got eight lots of AD. 16 lots of AE, and 3 lots of AC. OK, so there are those four routes out. Now, essentially, I'm not going to be including BA, DA, EA, and CA, because they return me to the starting vertex. OK, so um, essentially, what I've turned this into is that I've turned it into a directed network. Uh, where these four edges are going in that direction only. Okay? And likewise, I'm going to have DF and EF only. I'm not going to have FD and I'm not going to have FE. Okay? So, I am going to have BD, so four lots of BD. Now, BD, I could make directed. OK, because you would only want to go that route. But as I said previously, I'm going to go all out and um, essentially I'm going to include DB because B and D just aren't um, the start or finish vertex. So I'm going to include four lots of DB in full knowledge that that would never get picked because I would never go back on myself, because I know that I've only got AB. AB is only going that way. And I can't, when I go from D to B, go back along that route. So it would never get picked anyway. Okay, I know that. So it is within your rights, right? <laughs> if you wanted to, you could not include it. Um, but I'm going to include anything like that because it's just going to be easier for us to remember what we need to do at each stage, OK? Um, but if you want to kind of like not include it, then you can. You won't get penalised. But the idea is that I, just, you know, I, can, I can include it and just let the LP solver, the program like Lindo, just deal with it, OK? And that'd be perfectly fine. So I've got that one sorted. Uh, let's do this one next, shall we? So, uh, plus seven lots of CE, okay, and I'll have E7, uh, sorry, EC, because uh, it's not directed. So, plus seven EC. Uh, now, the DE could either be in that one, you probably agree, could be in either direction. So, three ED. Um, and then we've got 12 lots of DF. Not FD, because it's going to the end vertex, and five lots of EF. OK? So that's my objective function. Then subject to, so we want constraints for each of my vertices. So let's go with A first. Um, so roots out of A are AB, or AD, or AE or AC. And I'm only going to pick one of them, and the rest will be zeros, so that's going to be equal to 1. Then we want one uh, constraint for each of the other 
um, vertices, so for B. Now, the roots into B can either be AB, or because I'm leaving it as undirected, DB. So there are those two roots into B, but the only root out of B is BD. So we have, we add together the roots in, take away the roots out. There's only that one root out. So either all of these are zero, in which case I don't go via B, or uh, one of these is one, and that one is one, okay? And you can see that if I had, um, if I included DB, so that was one and that was one, I'd be automatically going back to BD because I don't want to go back to A. There is no route here back to A. So either way, this is going to be equal to zero. So roots in, take away roots out equals zero for each of the vertices that is not the starting vertex. So for D, starting or finishing. So for D, well, let, actually, let's go for C next. Okay, let's go in alphabetical order. We've done A, we've done B, let's go to C. So we've got AC going in, and we've got EC going in. Take away the roots going out, CE. I'm not including CA, because that returns me to the start vertex. And that's going to be equal to zero. Right, how about D? So roots in, we've got BD or AD or uh, ED, okay, not FD because that's coming from the finished vertex, take away the roots out, which could be DB, uh, not DA because that gets me back to the start vertex, DE and DF, and that's equal to zero. So we've got a constraint for A, B, C and D, now E. So roots into E, we've got CE, we've got AE, we've got DE, not FE. Take away the roots out, so EC, not EA, ED, and EF. Okay, so they're my roots out, and that's going to be equal to zero. Okay, right, uh, and that's A, B, C, D, E, one left, so F, so the roots into F are either D, F, or E, F, only one of those is going to get picked, so that's equal to one. Okay, and so that is a formulation for the LP problem, so for the LP solver. Okay, so... We had a little bit of discussion through uh, about some of those uh, uh, variables being redundant. Fine, that's, that's perfectly fine. Let uh, Lindo solve the problem, okay? Don't, don't you worry about having to include them, um, or sorry, having to exclude them, uh, because you can include them and then the LP solver itself can deal with the problem.